Here's how you can save lead in Barotrauma. Lead is required for pretty much all ranged weapons in Barotrauma, making it one of the most valuable resources in the game. Meaning you can run out super quickly, which gets yourself into, well, situations. One of the easiest things you can do is switch out your coil guns and chain guns for pulse lasers. This ammo type requires lithium and alien blood for the refill, and alien blood can easily be found on the monsters you dispose of, making it a sustainable ammo source. That's right, we're bringing sustainable warfare into video games now. This will save your hordes of lead for your handheld ranged weapons, meaning you can survive and thrive in the depths of Europa. Potassium, sodium, and lithium all explode in water. Duh. And the same is the case in Barotrauma. Pro tip, don't carry it on your person when you're near a water source. But ironic, we operate underwater, there's water everywhere. That's right, but what you need is a waterproof crate to protect from those explosive moments. Specifically, either chemical medical explosive or a clown crate. Store these in your deconstructor or fabricator and then no more unhappy accidents. This is how you can create an instant hull sealing device in Barotrauma. You will need a detonator that can only be bought from colonies or military outposts, one wire, a switch button or lever, these can be bought or made, and a fixed foam grenade that can be made by a mechanic with the talent hull fixer, with one steel bar, one sodium, and one phosphorus. Attach the detonator to the wall of the room you instantly want to repair. Put the fixed foam grenades inside, then wire it up to that button so when it's pressed, ta-da, instantly fixed. However, this isn't automatic. To do that, instead use a water sensor in place of the button. Hook the output labeled high pressure from the sensor to the detector. This will then only trigger the device when high water pressure is detected, automatically sealing any emergency breaches. Just be sure to refill the fixed foam grenades regularly. Here's how to never run out of fuel again in Barotrauma. You will need an alarm buzzer or emergency siren, a regex component, and two wires. Put down your your chosen alarm somewhere where people can hear it. Then put your regex next to it. You will then need to type out the following expression in the regex component. This will detect if your reactor has 5% or less fuel. Then connect the signal of the regex to the set state of the alarm. Finally, hook the reactor fuel out to the regex component signal in. If you have many alarms going off, you can add a light component next to the alarm so you know which one is showing the emergency. And make sure to connect that to the regex out as well. If you're feeling extra fancy, you can also use a text display to show the percentage of fuel left in the reactor. The next isn't so much a tip, but might help you out in multiplayer. We all know how much of a CPU hog barotrauma is, and this can lead to laggy online play sessions, especially if you're playing with people from all over the world. You can now get quick and easy hosting that will allow you to offload your main CPU and be in the best position globally for you and your friends. Shockbyte is a low-cost hosting service that allows you to easily spin up your own Barotrauma server. And they have tons of other game servers you can purchase. If you want to try it out, I have a discount code in the video description and a big thank you to Shockbyte for sponsoring this video. Now, back on with the tips and tricks. The Masterwork Plasma Cutter is the best cutting tool in Barotrauma. Wrong. It is a child's toy in comparison to the professional cutting tool only used by the best crews in the game. The ancient weapon, only found in the alien ruins, is the best cutting device in the game. Quickly and effectively break walls in the ruins, wrecks, and submarines for those surprise attacks. Make sure to get an alien power source to fuel this gigantic handheld beast. And if you want to impress your friends, you can even use it as a jetpack. Here's how to easily navigate wrecks and ruins in Barotrauma. No longer will you get lost and go around in circles looking for your objective or way out. The mechanic with the talent hull fixer can create the handheld status monitor. The assistant with the logistic systems can create the handheld item finder. And the engineer with the talent grid maintainer can create the handheld electrical monitor. All of these devices give you the layout of the current structure you are inside. Meaning when you're inside a wreck or ruin, the device will instantly map out that structure. Personally, I think the status monitor is 
the best as it shows rooms, but all of them will help you navigate your way to that objective or to safety in the game. Outside your submarine in Barra Trauma is an unforgiving, dangerous and dark place. When traveling into caves or wrecks, you can use flares and glow sticks to light your way, but these sources of light serve another purpose that can mean the difference between life and death. They attract the monsters of the deep. If a flare or glow stick is present, monsters will prioritize these over the player as long as they're far enough away. You can use these to keep monsters at bay whilst you dispatch them from a distance. And if you can find the super flares in the alien ruins, correctly named alien flare, these burn twice as long as the regular flares. Here's how you can clear wrecks in Barra Trauma faster. Whilst the plasma cutter is the tried and tested method of getting through doors, it can be slow and time consuming unless you have two to three players cutting doors at the same time. Also, cutters take up oxygen tanks that need to be replenished. Instead, crowbars can be used to leverage open the doors, and an engineer with a talent unstoppable curiosity can do this 50% faster. When you combine that with a hardened crowbar, that's even 40% faster than the regular crowbar. But if you want to go really fast, what you want to do is find a security card from a body that will allow you to instantly open the doors and get into the secure lockers of the wrecks. Here's how to repair electrical and mechanical systems faster in Barra Trauma. Having a high skill in electrical or mechanical will help you repair systems faster. So be sure to repair, craft and perform actions that will help you skill up as fast as possible. The next thing is to use the right tools for the job. Higher quality tools means that you can go faster, but there are also special hardened tools that can be built by the engineer to give you 40% faster repairs. The next tip is to use the mini game when repairing. You will see a white line move from right to left. When this line is inside the repaired portion of the device, hit the repair button again to get a small boost. And if you are in a real emergency, you can use the repair pack, which is crafted by the mechanic with the skill modular repairs. These give you disposable tools that are 150% faster than the basic screwdriver or wrench. Here's how you can buff your guns to shoot faster in Barra Trauma. The Bandolier is one of the most underrated security officer items in the game. This item can be brought from the Separatist faction once you reach 50 reputation or higher, and is found most commonly at cities. Or if you have a security officer with the talent Don't Push It, you can craft it with two ballistic fiber and one plastic. It will give you a bonus of 15 plus weapons and has four item slots you can use for storage. However, there is a secret modifier that will give you plus 25% ranged attack speed and 25% turret attack speed. This is a massive bonus for just one item and will always give you the edge while fighting. And if you have a gunner with the talent Tamden Fire, you can push your guns even further as this gives the gunner and their closest ally a 20% damage attack buff. However, the range on this is limited so won't apply if the turrets are spaced too far apart. Let me know which is your favorite favorite tips and tricks in the comments below and if you have your own I'd love to hear them. Until next time, peace. A huge thank you to all the supporters on YouTube, Patreon, Discord and direct from my merch store. I couldn't do any of this without you, so thank you. Na, na, na.